Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Behind me, another big project. We're working on a Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter three valve. You guessed it, we're doing a timing job. Doing a complete timing with the phasers. We're also gonna do a high pressure oil pump and all the rockers or roller followers. This is a labor intensive job. This is something you need to do on your truck. Follow along. So first thing, the AC does need to be evacuated. If you do not have the equipment to evacuate the AC, I recommend taking it down to a local shop, have them evacuate it out. Then when you're done with the repairs, go back to them and they will give you your refrigerant back. The other two things we wanna do is drain the oil, drain the coolant. The coolant drain is right there on the passenger side, 19 millimeter. So there's only two real tricks I know to make the job go smoother. First, take the tires off, lower the vehicle as low as it'll go, have it on jack stands, and this will make having to climb up on the engine and all that stuff just a little less. Having to get up on a step stool and stuff just a little less. And then we're gonna take this fender well out. This is just the passenger side. Driver side's not a big deal. Passenger side, if you look, let me turn the light on. Right there, you can see the valve cover bolts are easier to get to from the wheel well than they are from the top. To get the fender off, there's just a couple of bolts here, uh, some clips, some more bolts around here, but it's not too bad pulling this off. So now that we have our preliminaries out of the way, let's start pulling off our front stuff, get to our radiator fan, pull that off, and then we'll work our way back. 10 mil here, pops off. These are all little Phillips clips. Having a pair of pliers like this really helps or a flathead screwdriver just to pop those clips up. Now our fan shroud is two eight millimeter bolts. Pull off our upper radiator hose. If it's stuck on, you can use an angled pick like this to get it off. Just move it around just to break that seal on it. Sometimes it likes to stick. Now there is a little clip holding this harness on over here. Pop that off. So let's pull off our fan, 36 millimeter. Now I'll put a link to this kit in the description, but it's for an air hammer. So it goes on this, you air hammer it, da 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 da. But I find even if you don't have an air hammer, it gives you a nice hitting surface to get that off. A lot better than the tools you can rent from the auto parts store. Give that a whack. There we go. Then we'll just spin it off. Make sure it doesn't fall. Ew, a lot of dust. Pit, pit. There we go. And then this whole thing comes out. Okay, let me back up, hold on. It'll come out, but let's take these off. I think it'll be easier that way. Is there a 13? All right, now let's try it. Third time's the charm. And I like putting the bolts either with the part off to the side or back where they came from. That way we don't lose them. So let's undo our water pump bolts or at least get them loose and then we'll take our belt off. 10 millimeter. Then our belt is a half inch drive and we'll turn it clockwise. So righty tighty actually loosens it and get a longer bar. There we go. Take a picture of the belt routing if you need it. And we can just finish taking off our water pump pulley. So let's start on the driver's side. This is the easiest side. Then it makes it feel like we're making progress. Power steering pump reservoir. Follow this black bracket all the way down. We'll get that loose. I don't think it has to come all the way off, just loose. And then this whole thing can just get pulled out of the way. So an 18 millimeter deep. I'm gonna put the socket on first and then put my ratchet on. This coolant hose is annoyingly in the way. And I dropped my socket. Let's remove it. We're just gonna remove this coolant hose here. There we go. Let's give it another spin. Yeah, that's the ticket. Let's see if that's enough. Okay, let's pull it off a little more. So it's still not all the way off. It's just unbolted a little more. Should just pop off, I thought. You're making me look bad. There we go. So, I don't know if you can see it, but it is notched right here. So that bolt doesn't have to come all the way out, but maybe just for getting this bracket off, pull it all the way out, but it's important to start it back in when we put everything back together. Otherwise, this bolt is a butt trying to get back on with this in place. So pull it all the way out to get this off, but when we put this back on, start it a few threads, and then you can slide this notch over the bolt. 
cool. Let's just go ahead and separate this from the bracket. Easy enough, three eight millimeter bolts. These two come off, this bottom one doesn't have to, just loose. Let's just bungee this out of the way. Well, let's keep moving. We can unplug this, we can unbolt this, 15 millimeter. Unplug this. There's a little green tab that you just push back and it should pop off. Same with on the manifold. Just a green tab here. Plug our VVT solenoid. Coils and injectors. Okay, comes off of this little stud here. And this stud back here. This can get unplugged on top of this harness. And then snaked under, just remember that it went under. But I guess going over wouldn't hurt, but it did go under. Move this out of the way, like that. And right down here, the harness is clipped onto the valve cover. We'll just pull that off. There we go. Out of the way enough. Pull our coils off, seven millimeter. So now we wanna vacuum out around the spark plug holes, top of the valve cover, get as much of that stuff as we can off, and then we'll take an air hose and get all the fine stuff out. So now we'll take our dipstick tube. We don't have to pull it out, just loose so it can get moved out of the way. So we'll move this hose back out of the way. Eight millimeter, that just allows it to move. Now we can pull off all our valve cover bolts, eight millimeter. I'm gonna start in the back because those are the hardest. And there is one in the far, far back. You have to feel it. All right, now they're broke loose. I'm gonna go back through and get them with my electric ratchet. So now we're ready to pull our valve cover. On the side here, they give us just a little lip. I wanna pry up on that. There's RTV on both sides, so it may stick a little. And we can get this up and out. Before we get this all the way out, let's take our variable valve timing solenoid off. Let me pull you around and I'll show you that. It's a little Torx. All right, it's a T27, and we'll pull this off on the other side first before loosening the valve cover. So you actually pop this little cover off here and then get an extension down in there and pull it out that way. We can do it this way, it really doesn't matter. Okay, now let that bolt out. Pop the whole thing off. There we go. Little oil drippage. Now we will be replacing these with new updated Ford parts. There we go. Let me unplug this. We'll give our harness a little more room. Unplug this up here. There's a red tab. Pull the tab out and then just pinch. There we go. That gives us a little more room. So sweet, this side's done. Pull off our old gasket. Okay, so let's start working on the passenger side, the right hand side. We'll be a little more involved, take a little longer, but we'll get it done. I'm gonna start by removing the battery. Eight millimeter on these posts. This one's a little fuzzy, we'll take care of that. Eight millimeter for the tie down. Now we'll pull our battery box off, 13 millimeter bolts. And this wiring harness here connects to it. We'll just pop those off. Having a pair of pliers like this works really good. And there's one vacuum connector in the back. I wanna make sure you don't forget that. Vacuum hose. And again, if you need a little pick, to get in that hose, sometimes they like to stick. So next we'll remove our engine computer, pull these tabs back, that unlocks them. Do that to all of them. And then we got 10 millimeter bolts holding it in. And then our computer bracket, 10 millimeter bolts for that as well. Oh man, I didn't have my microphone hooked up, so that sound is probably horrible. Next, we wanna work on getting our AC stuff out of the way. Really, it's the receiver dryer that we wanna remove. So you follow this top hose all the way back with a black clip that comes off. It just has these little push pins here, slides right out. Let me show you inside. We'll need a special tool. Looks like this, we can rent them from the auto parts store. If you don't have your own set, I forget which side we need. It may be a 5 8 but we'll see when we uh, get in there. So let me show you real quick what we're doing. So right on that black ring, we're gonna put our tool on this side. Let's move this white ring out of the way. There we go. 
All right, got our AC line off. Now, if you ever have used one of those tools to take off a fuel line, it's very similar. Now we'll remove this bolt here, 13 millimeter. Okay, we have an electrical connector here we want to pull off, and then it looks like it's a 7 16 oh, It should come out. Just wiggle and finesse. It's the word of the day. Got it. Okay, so that clears up all of this for us. Now let's start working over here. We can pull this off here. We're gonna pull this off here, 10 mil. This electrical connector, 15 on this bolt. Plug this. So we're pretty much just unplugging stuff, freeing stuff. Not a whole lot of art to it. We'll move this hose out of the way. Okay. Same thing here is just that little green tab. That comes up and out. We'll undo it from up here too. All our ignition coils. We got this connector here. There's a red tab we want to pull up. And then the same thing, it harnesses connected to the top of the valve cover. We'll pull that off. And I'm gonna undo this vacuum line. There we go. Just so that's out of the way. Boom, pretty much up and out. Let's pull our ignition coils off. So now we'll do the same thing. We'll vacuum it out really well. So we wanna free up this harness a little more. So if you follow it down, it goes to the top of our AC compressor and then down and around to our crank position sensor right there. You can get both of these from up top. The crank position sensor is easy to get to once we remove this bottom bolt. 15 millimeter, this little bracket comes out of the way, gives us access to pull that off. And then this harness can be pulled a little harder, giving us more slack. All right, there was one zip tie right here that we cut, so we'll put a new zip tie on when we install everything. And then there was just one more little clip holding it on to the cover here. So we got that off and now we're excellent, super free. So let's go ahead, work on our bolts all the way around. So again, this is why we removed the fender well. We got perfect access to all our bolts on this side. Plus we have to remove the dipstick tube for our transmission. There's a bolt right here, 18 millimeter bolt, easy access from right through here. All right, here we go with our second valve cover. Same thing, we just wanna pop it up, break that seal, there we go. Let's kinda of get everything out of the way. There we go. Oh yeah, we forgot our VVT solenoid. Man, I knew I was gonna do that. You just get so excited, you wanna get the valve cover off. Okay, so I think this might be a little more challenging. So there's a 13 millimeter bolt holding this bracket on, and that just gets this AC line just a little more out of the way. I think that's really what is holding us up the most. There we go. There. So now let's get access to our solenoid, just like on the other side. That should pop out pretty easy, just like that. There we go. Sweet, man. That was the hardest side. Now we can start working on our front cover. Oh, I forgot to hit record. I think it's harder to film than it is to be a mechanic. So I just got the tensioner pulley off 10 millimeter. These three pulleys off 13 millimeter. So that's as far as we've gotten. Let's go ahead and pull our crank off. That is an 18 millimeter. Now we'll want to replace this bolt with a new one. So now we'll have to get our puller to pull that off. So I have this steering wheel puller and the bolts end up being just the right size. Thread in there. Now we're gonna put our bolt back in without the washer. Just a couple threads. That's gonna give us a face for our puller. All right, let's crank it down. Perfect. So now comes the worst part, the power steering pump. Quarter inch ratchet, deep socket, 10 millimeter. We'll get you this top front one. Now if this clamp for this hose is in the way, you can just twist the clamp out of the way, but it sits on just like that. There we go, underneath, and we'll pull that off. Now I already busted it loose, so it'll take a little muscles to bust it loose. Now the other top bolt you can get with a 10 millimeter box wrench, and it's 15 degree angle, so if you do it one way, it's a little too cockeyed. If you do it the other way, it puts you in the right spot. Again, we'll bust that loose. This is already loose. Then with a 10 mil ratcheting wrench, we'll get that the rest of the way off. 
think I can get the rest by hand. That wasn't too bad. So this is the one that makes you cry. It's underneath in the front. Again, a box wrench will get it, and you can only turn it the tiniest amount. I already busted this one loose as well, just like all the others. If you remove the oil filter, that'll help. I want to move you guys just a little. You can start loosening it by hand after a while. You can get one finger in the front on it, and then one finger in the back. You just have to work them together. There, got it. That reveals a bolt. That's the whole reason why we're taking it off. So now we're ready to take our cover off. So let's start with the 13 millimeter bolts. Now there's one 15 down here still. Get that bracket off. And I believe the rest are 18 millimeter. Oh, the bottom ones are bigger. The bottoms are a 22 millimeter. So now underneath we have four oil pan bolts, two on one side, two on the other. Ratcheting wrench works really well. Ugh. Maybe a standard wrench to break them first. 13 millimeter. So just like before, we're gonna vacuum as much as we can. There should be a little spot right here. We can get a screwdriver. There we go. Nice. I don't think we need a screwdriver over here, but if you needed to, there's another little spot. Pop this off. And that's it. Perfect. Huh, check that out. That is a piece of the timing chain guide. Gone. So no wonder why this thing was making some noise. Look at that. Wasn't expecting to find that. Yeah, here's another piece right here. Huh, and another piece. Thing was disintegrated, look at that. Well, I'm glad we're in here then. All right, making progress. Got this thing all tore down. It's a big accomplishment. I'm gonna go take a lunch, and then when we get back, we'll be setting the timing. The crank you wanted at a certain position, then we'll start pulling off the timing stuff. Now this vehicle is also getting new cam followers or roller followers. So we'll walk you through that as well, how to replace those. Once the timing's off, it's super easy to pull those cams, pull each one out, put the new ones in, no big deal. We're also doing a high pressure oil pump, so we'll, we'll get that going as well. All when we come back. Okay, we'll be taking off the right hand first. So we can pull this, this is our tone ring for our crank position sensor. So we can put our crank pulley bolt back in. That way we can spin the engine just snug in there. So the keyway at 12 and our timing marks pointing straight up. So that's pretty close. Now on the left hand side here, it should have an L with an arrow pointing up. And on the right side, it should just be a tick mark. Some phasers may have an R on the right hand side. This one does not, but the L definitely pointing up. So now with the chain still holding everything in, we're just gonna pop these loose, not all the way out, just break the nut loose. Do that to this side. Take our crank pulley bolt back off. So once those are broken loose, just tighten them back up a little bit. I know it sounds funny to loosen them, then tighten them, but there's a method here. So just tight, not crazy tight, because we want to break them loose again. So a 10 millimeter gets our tensioners off, and we want to hold the cam while we pull the tensioners off. This cam might want to walk to the left or to the right, so we just want to hold it in place while we're doing this to catch it. With that said, don't use a ratchet, use a solid bar. All right, now this didn't want to kick. Okay, so we're still gonna hold our bar. We're gonna pull this off like that. Perfect, we're loose. Now we're gonna just move it a little in one way or the other. There, see how it kicked? But we caught it. And we don't have to worry about the valves hitting the top of the pistons too hard or anything like that because it was a controlled release. When it comes time to set the timing, we're gonna have to move this camshaft just a little back in its position, no big deal. Pull the chain off. And let me reposition you, we'll do the exact same thing to the other side. So we're gonna hold the cam, take off our tensioner, All right, 
it. I'm gonna walk the cam one way or the other. It's actually pretty locked right where it is. So it's just the right hand side that wanted to shift. The left hand side is nice and solid. Eight millimeter gets our chain guides off. And this one just broke too. So it was on its way out just like the other one. We'll pull these back off. Now, if this is as far as you're going, you can go ahead, fast forward to when we assemble this all together. What we're gonna do now is hop over, pull the cams off one cam at a time and replace our roller followers. Hopefully you can see good enough in there. 10 millimeter for our caps. Now when pulling the caps off, we wanna set them in a particular order so they go back in the same order. Now order of removal is starting with this front cap to that far back cap and then working your way towards the middle. The middle cap is last. I'm gonna loosen them all first. Make sure to put them on a nice clean surface. All right, our cam is free, we'll pop it out. And we'll pull out all our roller followers. They're just sitting in there. They should come out pretty easy. So while we have everything out, we're gonna take this opportunity to clean off our valve cover surface. Once we got all the heavy stuff with the vacuum, take a lint-free rag and we'll just wipe right where the gasket's gonna go. Avoid getting any of this grit in there. That's why we vacuumed first to get the heavy stuff. The rest of this should stick to the rag and use a fresh clean spot every wipe. And let me take you over. We'll get our new roller followers prepped. So prepping the new followers, there's not much to it. Pull them out of the bag. Now I just have a tub of fresh oil. We're just gonna sit them in there, get them all nice and soaked and then move that drum or that roller just around a little get those bearings nice and lubed up. And that's it. Then you just put one at a time back on the vehicle. Double check that all the roller followers are right in place. Now we'll put our camshaft on. Before we do that, let's just clean it off really well. All the lobes where the bearings go, nice and clean. Now there is still a little oil on the engine side, so that's good. If you feel like you need a little more oil, we can put a little more oil in there. So for orientation, our cam notch faces down. I'm gonna put it just close to where it was. Good. Now, if you wanna check orientation of your cam to make sure you're not way off, you can take the phaser, line that dowel pin here up with your notch like that and see if your timing marks are where they were when you took it off. So we're right on. Now we're gonna take some oil and drizzle it on the lobes and where the bearing caps go. Just a nice, good lube job. Clean gloves, you can even move it around a little. Now we'll take our middle cap, put that on. Now we're not gonna tighten the middle one down. I'm just gonna snug it for pressure. I'm just gonna finger tight those. Now we can lay all of them on. So now tightening is the same as removal. Starting on the big cap, then the far back one, moving your way towards the middle. 89 inch pounds. What I recommend is snugging them down, kind of walking the cam back in place before torquing it. All right, now go back through, double check your torque. This is a critical engine component. All right, this side is done. I'm gonna do the other side off camera is done exactly the same way. No difference, 89 inch pounds for our final torque. The only difference on this side when you put the cam back, our keyway is kind of facing up a little at a 45 when we put it back. So the opposite of this one, this one is facing down a little at a 45. Now for the high pressure oil pump, we'll pull this gear off. There are three eight millimeter bolts and then two eight millimeter bolts holding the pickup tube on. Getting it with a ratcheting wrench is helpful. And if you want, actually, I'm gonna stuff some rags down here. So if we do drop a bolt, we'll be able to retrieve it. It won't go all the way in the depths. All right, there's one. Now this next one is a little tricky, but we can still get it. I think my ratcheting wrench is a little too fat to get on that one. There we go, you just gotta slowly turn it out. Once you get it loose, you can get it with your fingers. It's hard to tell if I'm spinning it or if it's just slippery. I'm just gonna put a bolt in it to hold it from wobbling. So I think as it wobbles, it kinks the bolt. So I'm just gonna keep a mirror down here. Might help me see a little better. Got it. So I'm glad I did stick that rag down there. Let's see if I can, there we go. Wow, took about 15 minutes just to do that. But that's okay, because the manual 
had you remove the oil pan to do this the actual way. So this is a bypass. Not my idea. I got this from Ford Tech, make you loco. The guy knows a lot about Fords. So now you can push the pickup tube down and then this should slide out. There we go. So before installing our new pump, we're gonna take some oil, put it in here, or you can put it on this side here, doesn't matter. And then we're just gonna move this around inside just to get it all lubed on the inside of this pump because right now it's dry. Now there may be a little bit of lubricant already in it from the factory, but we wanna just make sure it's good and lubed before installing. Okay, we got a new O-ring on our oil pickup tube. So we just have to turn our pump on the inside here to get it to match up with this D-notch right here. There we go. So I'll put these bolts in, just snug them down. So I'm gonna put the easy one in first. All right, got it started. So on this one, I put a little rag on the end and I'm gonna put it in my ratcheting wrench and now it won't fall out. I'm gonna see if that'll, that'll help get it in. I'm also gonna get a mirror See if that'll help me too, so I can see the hole. <laughs> My jacket's stuck on the hood latch. Okay, we'll get it back in. I got an angled pick. I think that'll help me instead of my finger. Pull this back out. Still got the bolt on it. There we go, that was easier the second time. I'm gonna put a pick underneath to apply pressure. My hands are probably in your way. I think that's it. Pull that off, pull the little Rag towel out, this little thing. Get this out. I'm gonna do it by hand like I was to get it out. So you may have to do a little at a time. It really doesn't matter as long as it goes in. I wish my ratcheting wrench worked, but it, but it doesn't. All right, well, I'm just, it's already in. So I'm just gonna whittle on this to get it tight. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and then turn you back on. I finally got it. So these are torqued to 89 inch pounds. So just kind of feel it nice and snug. And then same with these three bolts, 89 inch pounds. All right, now we can pull all our stuff out. Sweet, it wasn't too bad. It took about a half hour. So we are done with our extras. Roller followers are in, new oil pump is in. So if all you're doing is your timing, this is where we wanna start. While we have everything off, let's go ahead and just clean up our surfaces really well all the way around. There's little RTV left over where the head meets the block. We wanna go ahead and scrape that off on both sides. If there's any big glumps of RTV down here by the oil pan where the block and the oil pan meet, we wanna go ahead and peel that off. Those are places we're gonna be putting new RTV. So we want a nice fresh surface and then take some brake clean on a rag and just clean off right where the RTV is gonna go so it's oil free for our new RTV. We wanna use a plastic scraper for this. Get off the bulk of the old stuff. So we wanna start with our phasers, and there's not a right or a left. They are the same part number. We'll put this on here, and there's just that little keyway. And we want a new cam bolt. So we'll put that on, snug it down. Now the cam bolt should come in the kit. All right, new crank sprocket with the dimple facing out. Now we can put our chain guides on. The skinnier one goes to the left. The super long bolt goes in the bottom. And the other one goes on the right. Snug those down. Those are torqued to 89 inch pounds. So our chain should have two unique spots. A spot with two colored links, and then across from it, a spot with just one colored link. The two colored links go to the top on the phaser and you want that to straddle our arrow on our timing mark, and that comes around, and then we want the bottom, oh, that goes up, to go on the dimple. So we'll probably need a mirror down there so we can see. I'm gonna get it down below first. Okay, right there. So this side of the chain right here goes under that dowel, and then we need to move the cams just a little clockwise to get it to line up up here. That's a 15 millimeter. Get this out of the way. Okay, perfect. And that can rest back. Now let's double check our bottom mark on the money. Top mark's on the money. So let me swoop you in real quick so you can see all the timing marks. So this one with the double links is right over the top of that. And then come down here, shine some light, and you can see those timing marks line up perfect with the dot. 
So our left hand timing chain is set. Now let's work on our right hand. So our right hand will be similar, but a smidge different. I'm gonna put the bottom on. Now this one will go over the top of the dowel. Just get it kind of set on there loosely. Okay. Now the top one, we're gonna have to move quite a bit to get it to line up, but just move the cam. Now if this bolt wants to come back out, we just tighten it up a little more. Okay, let's do it again. So it's over that mark. One tooth more. There we go, perfect. So now that this side is tight here, the cam will stay in place. We don't have to worry about it moving on us again. All right, let's double check our lower mark. Nice, right on the money. So let me swoop you in again. So this side is right over our mark. And then just like before, our bottom is right on that tick. Let's put our tensioner arms on and our tensioners. Now these look very similar, but the one that goes on the left side has this bump. Put that on the left, just slide it over the dowel. Perfect. The other one goes on the right. Perfect. Two new tensioners, there is an L and an R. We wanna make sure the R goes on the R, the right side, and the L goes on the left side. All right, double check your marks one more time. Good, nothing moved on us. So let's pull our tensioners. Our tensioners are 18 foot-pounds. All right, now let's torque our cam bolts. Now it'll be 30 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. Because we tighten this down a little to move our cam back, let's back off this bolt so we can get a fresh 30 foot-pounds. craziest thing. I think I got it on camera when I was torquing this side down. It kind of slipped a little further. It's like, what? What just happened? The phaser broke. This piece right here came off. It's not supposed to. It has three pins that lock it in place. Those pins sheared off. So this was a defective part. I went down to Ford. We got a new one. I have never seen this happen on a brand new phaser. That's wild. But I'm still a firm believer in going OEM. I believe that that one was a fluke and not the rule. So now we got our initial 30 foot pounds. This is how we're gonna get our 90s. Take a nice contrasting colored marker and we're gonna mark straight up. Do that on both of them, just straight up and down. Now, as we tighten that bolt, we want this vertical line to become horizontal. That's our 90 degrees. A little more. Just a wee. All right, got our 90s. So our timing is set. Let's go prep our front cover. So on our front cover, we wanna take out our old gasket. And then if there's any of that RTV on this side, I'll go ahead and scrape it off the best we can. Just get all this dirt off and make it look really good. All right, now we'll just take some parts cleaner and clean out these channels the best that we can, just to get any dirt debris out of it. Now we'll blow it out. Now we can install our new gaskets. Should only go on one way. So just find that way and stick it in. That's not it. Let's try this one. There, that fits better. All right, now to get our crank seal out, just a screwdriver from the backside here, a little hammer. Should come out pretty easy. There we go. Flip this over, clean out our hole. We'll put just a little oil on the outside to help it go in a little, and then a little oil on the inside for when it goes over the crank. Just set that in like that. Then we'll take the old seal, make sure it's clean, and then we'll put that on top, and we'll tap it in using the old seal. You just want it flush. All right, looks good, we'll just wipe it off. So that's it, now we'll take this underside and we'll clean that off really good. And then again, any RTV left over, we'll make sure to scrape that off. This actually doesn't really have any. Now we're gonna take a clean rag and some brake clean. Just give it one wipe. And we'll wipe the bottom, that way our RTV can stick. So that's pretty much it for here. Now let's go on the engine and there's a few places we need to prep there. 
So right where the head and the block meet, we just wanna make sure that's oil free for our TV. Down here too. And then in the corners of our oil pan in the block, we wanna get that oil free as well. So where the head and block meet, we're gonna put a dab of our TV there. This is a critical step if you forget. You'll have a leak. And then the corners of your oil pan and your block. We can take our cover and put it in at an angle and then in like that. There we go. We'll put just a couple bolts in. We'll just snug that. All right, and we'll let our RTV set up for however long your RTV says to, and then we'll come back and torque it up. We'll put in our oil pan bolts, not tight, just in, threaded. All right, now that those are started, we'll go ahead and torque our bolts. So I'll throw the sequence on the screen. They're all 18 foot pounds, and then go back and torque your two bottom bolts to 35 foot pounds. Now I'll just go through one more time, double check torque. Now our oil pan bolts are torqued to 15 foot pounds plus 60 degrees. Now we can put our crank pulley on. In the keyway, about somewhere in the middle, you wanna put a dab of RTV. If you don't, then you'll have an oil leak or the possibility of an oil leak seeping out of this keyway. And then on the back of it, just a little bit of oil or some kind of lubricant so it slides over our seal. Now you should have a new bolt. We'll put that in with our washer. Now sometimes these bolts are a little too short to get it started like that. It won't get it started. So what we want to do is just tap the crank in just a little just to get it started until we have enough thread to bite on it. There we go. And now we can suck it down and we'll go through the sequence of tightening that. All right, you'll feel it bottom out. We'll back it off. So first we wanna tighten this bolt to 66 foot pounds. That's to ensure that it's pressed all the way in. Then back it out a full turn and that just makes sure that there's no torque left against it. Then we wanna to torque it back up to 37 foot pounds. Once we have it at 37 foot pounds, we'll turn that bolt one more 90 degrees. All right, 37, and then same with the cam bolts. We'll draw a line vertical, and now we'll turn that crank bolt 90 degrees so it's horizontal. Now we can put our pulleys back on. The grooved pulley goes on the bottom. Feel your pulleys. Now would be a good time to replace them if you feel like you need to. Once you get one water pump bolt in, the others go in easier. Now everything is 18 foot pounds. All right, now the dreaded power steering pump. Those are also 18 foot pounds, but you won't be able to get a torque wrench on those. So you just have to feel your best. Let's get this back up. So if you get the top one in a few threads, that can hold it in place. Let's see if I can get my ratchet on here. No, maybe I can get this back one real quick. All right, so I got both the top ones just barely started. Now I'll get this bottom one going. All right, so it's in. It's just gonna be that long process of little by little by little, getting that one in. The top two are a lot easier to do. It's just that bottom one. But I'll do that off camera. Once that's done, then we'll start putting our valve covers back on. So now our valve covers, where the timing cover and the head meet, we wanna get rid of that silicone, any leftover RTV in that crease. We're gonna be applying new RTV. So we wanna make sure that that's nice and oil free as well with some brake clean. We'll put on our new gasket, and right here where these little square notches are, we wanna make sure that that's oil free as well, because that's gonna be what's touching the top side of our RTV. Now our new VVT solenoids did not come with a new cap. Because these were not leaking, we'll just go ahead and leave these caps the way they are. So before this sits all the way down, we'll make sure that we put our VVT solenoid, just like how we took it out, lift this up, put the new one in, tighten it up, and then this could set down on it. Just a dab of RTV. Really doesn't take a lot because it'll squish out just covering that seam there. Same with this underside, we can get it from the wheel well. Makes it easy. All right, now be careful snagging your gasket on anything on its way in. We'll just be nice and careful, make sure we don't snag on our cam caps. Move this all out of the way. Nice. Okay, everything clear in the front. I'm just gonna set it down. I'm gonna get a flashlight and just make sure our gasket is still intact and in the groove in the back. I'll go through the wheel well. 
All right, looks good. And all the way back there, looks good, sweet. Now let's get some finger tightened. Look at that, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so now we wanna put our VVT solenoid in. All right, sits right in, boom. Get that tightened down. Well, don't drop any of your tools down there. That would make me cry. Probably even put a rag right there if you're worried about dropping anything. Okay, we'll snug these up, snug it up. It's not very tight. Okay, let's set this back down. Should go in the hole like that. Boom, just like that. There we go, get a couple of them going. So we'll snug a few of these down, wait for the RTV to tack up, and then we'll torque them. 89 inch pounds, starting from the middle, working your way out. Let's hop over to this side real quick. Should be a lot easier. It's a little RTV, little RTV here. Bungee up these wires, it'll probably be easier. We'll have to see how this goes because we were kind of fighting this hose here a little and the uh, dipstick tube a little. But let's see. All right, so I think I'm just hanging up in the back just a little. So it's just that last cam cap I need to clear. Oh, there we go. Okay, give it a good visual again. Make sure that gasket is still on. I think we're good. VVT solenoid. All right, good and snug. Now I hit this spot with the RTV, so I'm just gonna give it just a smidge extra. Okay, set it down. All right, we'll snug all these down and then torque them, 89 inch pounds. Cool, I'm gonna do this off camera and then it's just a matter of putting all the electrical back on, putting our serpentine belt on, fan back on, shroud back on, oil, coolant, and then we'll run through the starting procedure. Okay, so my SD card is almost full. So buttoning everything back up will just be quick. I'll point some stuff out, but really it's just putting stuff back on, mostly just electrical stuff at this point. Got the ignition coils back in. Don't forget our dipstick tube bolt and our bracket for our power steering pump fluid. There's that bolt down there we wanna tighten up. On this side, we got our AC stuff to put back on, our engine computer, battery. Don't forget our transmission dipstick tube bolt down there. A uh, couple of brackets up front. The radio frequency interference thingy. We'll put those back on. And I think that's the majority of it. If there's anything that sticks out to me as I'm putting the rest of it back together, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we'll see you at the startup. All right, just a few things on this side. So this harness goes on this side of the filler, not on this side. When you put it on, it may want to be on this side. That's okay, you can take the filler cap off and then it'll just barely squeeze over this neck to get it on, but it goes on this side. The other thing is the AC. Put this on first before putting that back one on because you'll need this to move around, that dryer to move around to get this back on. So this first before the back will help. I did the back first and regretted it. Other than that, um, this electrical for the uh, computer goes under this AC line, not over. If you forget that, that's okay. It'll slide in between. I think that's about it as far as putting it back together, some of the technical nuances. So belt's back on. I'm gonna put our fan, fan shroud on, um, that thingy, the hose back on, and then fill it up. We got our oil filter back on as well. It's easy to do it right now. I think that's it. All right, we're ready to start this thing. First thing we wanna do is put the gas pedal all the way to the floor. So key off, pedal to the floor. That puts it in clear flood mode. This way it will not start. What you wanna do is just crank it over and that'll prime the oil pump and get oil uh, circulated around in the head at a lower RPM instead of starting it straight up. So pedal to the floor and then we'll just crank it. And keep cranking, keep cranking until your oil level goes up. All right, we got oil pressure. That was the radio. So right there's our oil pressure kicked up. Great, now we can start it. You saw the cam phaser blow apart as we tried to tighten it up. Well, let me show you because our variable valve timing solenoid is also bad. New from the box, bad part. 
Let me show you. When we first started it up, we went through that starting procedure. It was running so rough. Looked at misfire data, it was one whole bank. So this left side or the driver side bank was all misfiring. So I looked at the timing. Sure enough, our timing was off 60 degrees. So I put in one of the old VVT solenoids that I had on hand and it fixed it. Now let me show you real quick on the scan tool with the old variable valve timing solenoid in, you'll see the timing. Then I'll put in the brand new one back in and you'll see the issue. You probably can't see in there, but that's the variable valve timing solenoid, the old one. You can see how it's a little varnished, a little golden color. So that's the old one. Let's fire it up. All right, just to show you what we have, we got the variable valve timing actual, the error. So that's the difference between the actual and the desired. Um, the duty cycle, so we'll just see that it's not being commanded. And then this is bank one. So this is all three bank two. These two are bank one. So let's start it up. Running smooth. Purrs like a kitten and you can see right within specs. Okay, so now let's put in the brand new one. So that's the old one we were just running on. Nice and smooth. Brand new one out of the box. Throw that one in, plug it in. Now let's go start this up. In fact, just to prove that this is the same solenoid, I'm gonna bring my scan tool out here and then bring the camera around so you can see that this is indeed that brand new one. So I'm not making this stuff up. So it's running really bad. You can see the engine just shaking. Can you see that? We're at 69 degrees error. 63 degrees advanced or retarded, not quite sure. Running super rough, you can see it. See it there, nice and shiny, brand new. Well, so that wraps this video up. Big timing job. Hopefully this will be helpful. Now there are special tools that Ford makes that you can use on this. Now they are not required, but you may prefer to have them. So just something to consider. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.